It was actually perfect timing. Because he was able to do this, he was finally able to support himself and his family. Hey everyone, welcome to Painting in the Past, a series where I paint something and talk about the past. Today we're going to be talking about painter Winslow Homer. Now, there's not really a lot of information on his life, but I've been very into watercolor painting lately, and Winslow Homer did a lot of watercolor paintings. Winslow Homer was an American landscape painter who was best known for his marine subjects in his painting. A lot of his work features people by the ocean or on ships. He's considered one of the leading American 19th century painters and a preeminent figure in American artwork. Although he is mostly self-taught, Winslow began his career as a commercial illustrator. He was born in 1836 in the Cambridge area of Boston, Massachusetts, and would eventually move to New York City in 1859. Early in his art career, in around the spring of 1861, Winslow Homer primarily worked in oil paint, which is not what he would be known for later on in his career. So I kind of like this, how he ended up switching mediums. Some artists do this a lot, but others tend to stick to one medium and follow that through their whole career. So this is kind of cool to see how he switched through different mediums. Also in 1861, Winslow Homer was sent to Virginia to work as the editor and designer design chief of the Harper Weekly magazine. While working at the magazine, he created a lot of his early Civil War paintings around 1863. Now this is a huge contrast from what he ended up being known for, but at the time these paintings were popular and they really symbolized what the war was thought to be. By the time the war came to a close, he had his paintings Prisoners from the front and veterans in a new field became very popular as they became what Americans thought of the war and what war really meant to the whole nation. During this period, Winslow Homer was living in New York City again, and most of the money he brought in came from his paintings and career working for the magazine and designing stuff as a commercial illustrator. Now this is where we began to see a lot of his coastal work and a lot of the subjects featured seasides from Massachusetts, New Jersey, places along the coast that he would visit. Towards the end of 1866, Winslow Homer would take a trip to France in a very rural area along with Paris and we would see those subject matters and places become a prominent feature of his subject matter. During this time, he would paint basic subjects like children playing in the parks or people walking by. And it was around this time that Winslow Homer started getting into watercolors. By 1875, he would actually have a lot of success using watercolors, which would allow him to have a steady income painting and do a lot more field work. And it was during this time that he created some of his most famous works. Also during the 1870s, Winslow Homer would move back to the same place in Virginia he had previously lived. And he actually returned to this place in Virginia to kind of get a feel of what the community and people around him felt like post wartime, which is kind of interesting. Like I wonder why he picked that place opposed to somewhere else. But you can only imagine the very somber atmosphere he came back to. And this was kind of evident by the somber attitude his paintings from the late 1870s actually had. In 1881, Winslow took a trip to England, which would be one of his last trips abroad, and he ended up settling in color coats where he stayed from late 1881 to 1882 when he left. And during this time, he depicted a very strenuous lifestyle in his paintings from this seaside town and the hard work of its residents. During this time, he mainly painted women, 
But once he moved back to New York City, it was a complete culture change and this really changed the course of his paintings to come. From 1883 until his death, Winslow Homer lived in a small town outside of Portland, Maine. His final years consisted of creating work that was some of the most impressive watercolor work he had ever created in his career. And this is kind of interesting. It was noted that he really enjoyed the isolation and solitude that this town gave him. So he really enjoyed in particular being in this area. By 1880, some of his most dynamic and contemporary work became his most well-known and admired work. In 1910, Winslow passed away, but he still remains to be incredibly well-known, and a number of his works can be visited in museums in New York City and Boston.